A few years ago, I was training a new hire paramedic. We were sent to a chest pain call where we found the fire department caring for a middle-aged man. The trainee walked up to his patient and asked his first question. Sir, do you have chest pain? Objection, I said quickly. Sustained, said the two firefighters simultaneously. That's awesome. I love good comedy. This is Angry Bill for pre-hospital wisdom. Here we understand that medicine's medicine, but paramedics and EMTs have unique skills, knowledge, and attributes that make them special. What was the issue in that case that resulted in a sustained objection? The issue, at least the one I want to talk about now, is a common error that I see. Actually, I hear the error. It's asking leading questions. It's objection, Your Honor, leading the witness. Leading questions for our purposes are questions that can be answered with a yes or no. Do you have chest pain is answered yes or no, or I don't know if they don't know, but that's a whole different rant. There are two problems with leading questions. First, a leading question doesn't facilitate conversation as well as an open-ended question. Conversation is good for us. It allows us to get more detail, bond with our patients, and allow a chance for information that we didn't ask for to be volunteered. Second, like an unwary Jedi, you can unintentionally lead a patient to answer questions the way they think you want them to be answered. You're leading them to the answer. It can be due to people attempting to make sure you pay attention or people trying to give you the answer they want you to hear. Whatever it is, for good or bad reasons, you're essentially leading them to the answer. A lucid, intelligent, well-thought-out objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Overruled. Picture where you would end up if each of these questions were answered in the affirmative. Do you have chest pain? Does it radiate to your left arm? Oh my God, is it causing you shortness of breath? Are you nauseated? Does the pain feel like an elephant sitting on your chest? The way to avoid leading questions is simple. All you have to do is start each question with one of the six high school journalism questions. Who, what, when, where, why, how. Commands work as well. How does your chest feel? Can't be answered with a yes or no. Neither can how's your breathing? Why did you call 911 today? How's your stomach feeling? What does your chest discomfort feel like? Where's the, where is the discomfort located? What would you have to do to me to get me to feel the same way? As for commands, tell me about your medications. Tell me about the last time this happened. If you start each question with who, what, when, where, why, how, or a command, you'll be ahead of the game. How many times have you asked a patient, do you know your social security number? And gotten, yep, as an answer. It's frustrating, isn't it? Replace the do with a what. What is your social security number? Where is your social security number kept? Good supervisors will use this trick on you too. At least I did. The patient said you were a jerk. Is that true? Is a dumb question. It's begging for a no, accompanied by a facial expression that appears to be holding up a halo. What happened on that call after you arrived on scene is a better way for the soup to phrase it because it's open-ended and without prior assumptions. There are three main caveats to the no leading questions rule. First, people in extremis, like those who are one to two word dyspneic or aphasic for whatever reason are not known to be good conversationalists. You have a limited amount of time to ask three to five questions before they get things placed in their mouth or between their vocal cords. Don't be afraid to ask direct leading questions then. Are you asthmatic? Are you getting tired of breathing? Do you want me to take over that for you? The second caveat comes up when the uh, open-ended question isn't working. For example, I've had this conversation seemingly a thousand times. Me, what does your chest discomfort feel like? Patient, I don't know, it just hurts. Me, I understand, but what would you have to do to me to make me feel the same way? Patient, are you an idiot? I told you, it hurts. What we have here is a failure to communicate. In this case, I've I feed the patient the answers that I'm looking for, but it's important that I shotgun a lot of choices at them so that way I'm not leading them. What I mean is, is it sharp, stabbing, aching, cramping, crushing, burning, dull? Even if they start to answer, I try to get through all of my choices. That way I'm not leading them to agree with the first option. A lot of times a light bulb comes on over their head and they give me an answer. The patient will say something like, oh, 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 I see. It's kind of like a dull ache. The third caveat is when I'm trying to specifically rule out something important. Once I had a patient with a few, uh, with ST elevation on his EKG along with some bigeminal multiform PVCs. His EKG from two weeks before had neither of those concerning findings. 
after getting fine in response to several variations to the how is your chest question, I really wanted to make sure that we were speaking the same language. I wanted to know if his chest hurt at all. Given that at, <clears throat> at that point, since I gave it a couple of open-ended tries, I asked flat out if his chest felt completely normal. But I phrased it as, let me make sure I understand, because I can be dumb from time to time. Correct me if I have it wrong. What you're saying is that your chest feels completely normal. Nothing weird at all in that entire area, right? He said it did. Weird. But it's important to know that his definition of fine is the same as my definition of fine. The three caveats are rare, so if you keep to the journalism questions, for the most part, you'll be doing fine. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. Practice asking your questions that begin with uh, did, is, are, and does by using who, what, when, why, how, or commands. Who, what, when, why, <clears throat> who, what, when, where, why, how are your friends. Thanks for listening. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. I'm really interested if anyone disagrees with this point of view. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video to help me out. Uh, my next goal is to try to get to 100 subscribers, so I've got about 12 to go or so. Uh, pass it along, see if we can find some new subscribers so I can meet my goal. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Until next time, stay safe.